I'm Lamar Pitts, and this is my dad, Greg Pitts. We go all around the world covering community service, places to go, places to shop, places to eat, not to mention we record our lives on a daily basis. So to see our perception of the 21st century, join us in Lamar Pitts TV. Stay tuned for more. We've had ducks on site for many, many years. And what they do, if there's any spillage from the grain trucks, they'll go in and clean it up. That way we don't have a rodent problem around here, thanks to the ducks. Those ducks, if you'll listen real close, none of them say quack, quack. They've been here so long, they all say drink jack, drink jack. <laughs> <laughs> now this statue right here is not the original statue that stood here for many years. The original statue that stood here for many years is the one that greeted you when you came inside our visitor center today, that white Italian marble statue, that statue does depict Jack at his correct height. He was only five foot, two inches tall as a grown man. Another interesting feature about Jack was he only wore a size four men's shoe. What? Yeah. When they started making that statue, they realized they had some problems, though. When they got down to Jack's feet, they would have put a size four shoe on him, stone cold sober. He would have toppled right off of that pedestal and wound up face first into the ground. So that statue inside, it is 5'2", Jack's wearing a size 12 shoe. Wow. There it is. Check it out. <laughs> now, years ago, back in the good old days, it was not that uncommon for us to hand out samples here. And don't get too excited. Y'all heard me say that was the good old days. <laughs> Last year we had about 220,000 plus people come through here to take this tour, much like what you're doing today. And so we don't hand out samples, as you might can imagine. So if you got a camera with you, take advantage of it now. This will be your only opportunity anywhere on the tour to get yourself a free shot of Jack on the Rocks right there. <laughs> <laughs> Want to have your photo made with Jack? Jump on up there. <laughs> We built this office shortly after coming to the cave spring here in 1866 and we used it up until about 1953 as our only office for the entire distillery. Take a look over the fireplace, that's the last known photo of Jack. His real name was Jasper Newton Daniel. Jack just was a nickname that he had picked up as a boy. Went to his grave as a bachelor, he never was married. His favorite nephew was that guy right over there. His name is Liam Motlow. Liam came to work here at an early age of about 16, and uh, Jack gave him a job here at the distillery. He didn't give him a job, a uh, cushy job, though. He put him right out there to work with everybody else, and he told him every time old Liam would start to complain, now, Lemmy, don't complain, because you know one day I'm going to give you this place. And now you know why he's smiling so big in the photograph up there. Lucky son of a gun. Take a look at this safe right here. This is the actual safe that killed Jack Daniel. It's a true story. He got to work early one morning, planned it that way. He wanted to get here before anybody else did, so that morning about daybreak, just before the uh, sun got over that hill really good, he walked into this office and he squatted down in front of this safe and he tried to get into it. But for whatever reason that morning, he could not remember the combination. The harder he tried, the more frustrated he became. Finally, he got so upset that he couldn't get into this safe that he jumped up and hauled off and kicked it. Mm. And when he did, he broke his big toe. Let his temper get away from him. Well, that toe became infected and they had to amputate it. Wouldn't long after that, that infection was in his foot and they had to cut his foot off. And right before he died in 1911, at the age of 61, they had to cut his entire leg off. He actually died as a result from an injury he got kicking this very safe right here. Mm. Yeah, true story. Now I'm the type of person I like to try to learn from other people's mistakes. <laughs> First time I heard that story I thought to myself, you know, it's probably never a good idea to get to work early because if you do it could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Come up with your own conclusion. <laughs> Be careful when you walk by. It's already killed one man. <laughs> but here at Jack Daniels we love to tell everybody what's in our whiskey. Starting out with that good cave spring water. You gotta have a good water. That water right there flows virtually iron free and that's important when you're making a good whiskey. We use 80% corn, 12% malted barley, and 8% rye, along with a little bit of yeast. That's it. 
We don't add any artificial colorings, flavorings, or preservatives to our whiskey. Now, I'm not going to stand up here before y'all today and try to convince everybody in this room that old Jack Daniels is a health food drink. What I would <laughs> but what I will say, doctors across America are saying Americans don't get near enough whole grains in their diet. <laughs> Every morning I have a little shot of my coffee. I like it a whole lot better than the taste of Wheaties. I promise you that. It's kept me young too. Matter of fact, did I tell y'all earlier I'll be turning 72 this year? <laughs> Take a look on the wall over here. You'll see seven photographs. These are all the master distillers that we've had in the history of the distillery. People ask me about this job all the time, want to know about it. I'll tell you, one thing you got to have is patience. You can see we've only had seven of them in the history of the distillery. Uh, Jeff Arnett is our current master distiller. He's this gentleman right here. He was born and raised right here in the great state of Tennessee, and we're mighty proud to have him as our master distiller. All right, we're going to make our way down the lane. Y'all come on right this way. Well, Jack Daniels whiskey is now sold in 130 international countries. We just started selling whiskey to a little place called China recently. You know, they opened up their uh, borders for American products. And that tickles me to death because I've been buying a lot of their junk at Walmart for years. <laughs> a little talk, though, people are concerned if we start selling those Chinese whiskey over there that all those TVs that we buy at Walmart might be stuck on old channel number seven. So I don't know uh. if there's any truth to that or not. <laughs> but no matter where you go, even if you're in China, Every drop of Jack Daniels whiskey that you see has been made right there in that building, that big gray building with a light on it. That is our steel house. Now, we're sold, as I said, in 130 international countries. It's pretty amazing that that one building right there supplies the whole world with whiskey. Before you can make whiskey, though, you have to make mash. That's taking those grains and mixing them up with corn, uh, with, to a cornmeal consistency. You grind them up. Mix it with water and yeast. You let it set for about four to six days in a process we call fermentation. And what you're doing, you're allowing a little time to pass so that the natural sugars can be converted over to alcohol. Nobody wants to drink mash, so you have to cook it out. And that's when we send it to the steel. We'll heat that up, and that alcohol will evaporate to the top. We'll capture it and cool it down through a cooling condenser, and that's where we get that 140 proof whiskey that comes off of the steel. So we're on our way there now, I'll remind you, once we get in that building, no photography inside, and if you have a cell phone, we'll ask you to power it to go in and take a tour, but it was absolutely fabulous. We're enjoying the experience in Lynchburg and the Jack Daniels Distillery. We're talking to our boy, Jesse James. We loved it. We loved it, Jesse. Very <laughs> that'll, nice. That ought to open up your sinuses. If you, if, you didn't, if you leaned over and it didn't hit you, you may want to go to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. I see you didn't react too much. No, I was, I was breathing as I got close. Oh, okay. oh, he's okay. smart. Okay. One <laughs> trick from a tour guide, he used to hold his breath and lean over in there and close his eyes real good, and everybody thought you could hold your nose in there. <laughs> found out right quick that you can. All right, we're going to head over here to Charcoal Mellowing. I promise you, you'll like the smell over here a lot better. <laughs> well, you can get them downtown on the town square. It's easy to get to. All you have to do is go left out of our parking lot. Go left at the only traffic light in town, and you'll be on the town square. That's where you can find T-shirts, ball caps, smoking pellets, barware, anything that you possibly can want. It's got Jack Daniels in it or on it. We got some of it downtown on the town square. Even somebody's making Jack Daniels ice cream down there. So. Oh, wow. Hey folks, we are finished with the Jack Daniels tour here in Lynchburg, Tennessee. Yeah. Now, I had so much fun, I had to get a bottle. Uh -oh, 160th birthday. And my birthday is in 30 days. So for everybody who knows me, mm -hmm. we gonna have some fun. <laughs> Again, yeah. Greg Pitts producer, Amar Pitts TV, special edition. Yeah. If you have Jack Daniels, do drink responsibly. Goodbye. Mm.